Welcome to Fossbot. This is a new show I used to do, and I'm bringing it back. Basically, if you've never watched Fossbot, it's a bunch of Linux and open source news, as well as some funny ha-has. Honestly, this show isn't really that funny. Oh no, I'm having flashbacks to editing this show. Fossbot 5.20 came out this week, and they did some interesting things. One, they finally set the taskbars on the bottom to be in the style of Windows 7 instead of having your open app show text like in Windows Vista. If you like the old way better though, it's only one right click and then like three left clicks away. The time also shows the date by default under the time, kind of like how Windows 10 does it. Although in Windows 10, the date and the time are the same size. In Plasma, one of them is bigger than the other, so I don't really like how it looks. But you know, it does look good. The new display bubbles for volume and brightness controls are now less intrusive and overall less obtuse. Please bring this to GNOME. The notification center also got overhauled with a grid based view instead of list and there are a lot of changes to the system settings including some new settings panels or not new uh, redesigned settings panels and settings now shows your items that have been changed from the default value. Hey runner can also be now put in the center of your screen instead of the top and Plasma 5.20 has a very slick new wallpaper. Plasma Mobile also got a bunch of improvements. Plasma Mobile now has a brand new lock screen that looks really awesome. Uh, and when you open it up, you can swipe up to reveal the pin code. And the new pin keyboard looks really clean. There's also a new virtual keyboard on Plasma Mobile, which I believe is the same keyboard as the Ubuntu Touch keyboard. There's also been some memory optimizations in the K-Clock app. And the K-Weather app supposedly has some new animated backgrounds for different types of weathers, although I was not able to figure out how to enable them. There's also a new game center for Plasma Mobile called Arcade, which lets you play KDE games and see your achievements and high scores. And to be honest, Plasma Mobile just feels a lot less buggy with this update. So great job, Plasma, although I still think Android and even Ubuntu Touch and Bosch are a lot smoother than Plasma Mobile. No way! A GNOME user complimenting Plasma? This has been 2020 for you. Another exciting release this week was Kernel 5.9, and 5.8 was one of the biggest Linux kernel releases ever. And let me tell you, this Linux kernel release is not nearly as big. We did get a bunch of performance enhancements, including FSGS base instruction in Intel Ivy Bridge and AMD processors. I do not know what that means a bunch of Linux file system updates, and an interesting update from Microsoft that allows 8 SN30 Pro controllers like this one to have a rumble feature. Kernel 5.9 also adds support for the PinePhone's main board, as well as support for the Snapdragon 630 SoCs, including the ones in the Sony Xperia Android phones. This update also has a fix for a serious bug that Google discovered, in the Linux Bluetooth stack and Intel recommends upgrading to this kernel because of that vulnerability. Now to be honest, I don't know much about the kernel, but if you do, check out this article on kernelnewbies.org which shows every new feature in the kernel. I'll put the link down below in the description. Heroism now has a new Find Your App initiative. If you want to see an app working on Fosh or help improve an existing app on Fosh, then you can vote with your wallet for the app that you want to see the most. For example, let's say I want to see a Discord app and I want to improve GNOME music and make it adaptive. Well, just select those two apps, select a donation method, and they will be using our donations in order to reinvest into the top five apps we want to see working on Fosh. Not only will this help benefit people who are ordering the Webrum 5, but it will also help people who have the Pine phone using Fosh. Basically any phone that uses Fosh, that you can use Fosh on, this will help as well as even desktop users might see more GNOME apps getting funding, which means that our GNOME experience will improve, meaning a better UI overall. This is a really good idea to me, but to be honest, I don't really think this campaign is going to succeed. A lot of people do not trust peerism right now, and these types of people might not want to trust peerism to reinvest their money. Personally, I do trust peerism, and I hope that the campaign succeeds, but I don't have money to contribute to the project. But if you like peerism, I highly recommend to contribute to this campaign and fund your app. Or not your app, I guess the one you want to see. The GNOME video editor Pitavi has gotten its first update since 2018 with a new versioning scheme and several new features. 
For one, there's a new plugin feature that allows people to make and install plugins for the video editor to extend its functionality, and there's a cool new developer console for interacting with the app through Python. There's also a new effects panel for quick access to effects, and the Clips effects UI has been redesigned in order to make it easier to work on multiple effects at the same time. We also have nested timelines, an easy Ken Burns effect, and a redesigned render dialog UI. You can hide and mute layers, and you can create solid color clips, kind of like how you can in Caden Live. There's also new keyboard shortcuts to make editing stuff less tedious. I've got to say, I've tried Pit to V many times before because I love GNOME maps, but Caden Live has just always been a lot more feature rich and more stable, so that's what I used to edit my videos. But with this update, it seems to be a lot more stable than my previous experience with Pit2V. So if you just need to make simple edits and you liked Windows Movie Maker before it got discontinued or whatever, then this is the perfect video editor for you. Pizza still needs Caden Live to animate me. Yeah, that's true, but that still takes me forever to do in Caden Live. And for our final bit of news, we have the release of Enzo OS 0.4. If you've never heard of it, it's an OS that believes in greener, simpler computing or something like that. I don't know. It uses XFCE, but with a lot of elements that are elementary. Unintended. Enzo OS uses the same multitasking view as elementary OS, as well as Plank, which is the same dock that Pantheon uses, as well as they both share a ton of libraries. This week, Enzo OS 0.4 came out, which is now based on Ubuntu 20.04 instead of 18.04. We also have a new note-taking app built in called Penny, in this release that is formatted with a GDK source view, which means that it's kind of formatted like code. Its software center has also been reworked with some extra performance improvements, and you can now see the most starred applications. There's also a new built in-house dark mode made by Paul Linux Themer, based on Arc theme with a small splash of Mac OS in there. Well, I guess it's not built in-house if it's made by third party, but I mean, it's made for the distro. I don't know. I guess it's built in-house, but it's also built off-house. I don't know. Enzo OS is a very interesting distro, so I recommend checking it out, and I might even make a video on it soon. Anyways, that's it for today's news. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks by Epic Patrons, Ashton Scott Snap, Jonathan Reynolds, Jim Peter, Sam Covet, and Mitchell Vantino. You don't have to be a patron. He posts nothing there. Yeah, I admit, I haven't posted for a while, but I am working on a Patreon-exclusive program right now, and it's going to be added in around a month to Patreon, so stay tuned to that. Anyways, I got to go. This has been uh, Boss Spot, and I'll see you next week.